Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Julia Marley back at it again. <laughs> I do not sound like that. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. <laughs> I am with, as you can see, my brother, who look at a whole video, Ben. Benjamin Marley. Benjamin Marley. In the shot. Tonight we are having a little sibling outing. outing. Yeah, so Cheers. fun. We are going to a SAG event, Ben's first SAG event. Woohoo! I think I said this in my Q&A video, but we both watch Lessons in Chemistry. Well, you don't watch it. Yeah, I do, what are you talking about? How many episodes? I think I've three. watched like five. Oh, okay. There's a reception after. I never know what to expect because every event is different. Also, my mom and I went to the morning show event and I thought I was gonna make a vlog from that, but I just did not get enough good footage, so sorry about that. But today's video is gonna be a vlog. Ben, if you get to ask Brie Larson a question, what would you ask her? Can't be on the spot like this, I gotta think about it. Okay. We are here trying to park. Fancy this is. So fun. Succession. This is the hotel, the addition. And yeah. Join me in welcoming actor Asia Naomi King and executive producer, actor Brie Larson. Woo! You get a microphone, you get a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on a, on a beautiful series. Um, this is an audience of your fellow actors. Um, yeah. I actually always like to go back to the beginning and sort of ask, was there a moment you knew you wanted to be an actor? Like, did you started so young, was it a hobby or did you know from an early age it was gonna be a career? Was there that, that lightning bolt moment? I knew, yeah, I knew very young. It was, I remember in second grade there was a school play and I didn't, I didn't, I was very shy as a kid. I didn't talk very much and I just have like very early memories of feeling this like intensity and really wanting to be part of it. Um, and that has kind of carried me until now, quite simply. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like a lot of presence and a lot of um, purpose in like honoring the seven year old inside of me. I actually don't know if being seven is when you're in second grade. I just think that that's <laughs> when I actually started acting was when I was seven. And so that was for me, it still feels like the fact that I'm now 34 and I'm living a life that still means so much to me and doing things that matter so much yeah. to me and it was based upon a notion of a child is just, I mean, what yeah. a gift. That's amazing and wow, gosh. <laughs> I, I did, I definitely didn't know it's seven. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I was in high school. I was in high school about to, senior year, about to graduate and I thought I was going to be a doctor wow. and make my parents very, very proud <laughs> for school waiting. <laughs> Uh, and uh, realized like, oh wait, like I'm captain of the cheer squad and I'm president of choir and oh yes, wow. I was uh, very active. <laughs> yeah, you would have you hated me in high school. <laughs> and yeah, and I was like, this is the thing I want to do. And and then I cried because I thought that that meant I was going to have this life of instability, which it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. Yeah, but um, but I was like, but that's what I want, and I don't care, and I'd rather take the risk and yeah, kind of never look back. Were you doing school plays or anything? Oh my God, Oh yes. 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 Okay. At the time, <laughs> like, fervently. So that's where the bug bit. Yeah, like it was, It was. it's funny too, because like I think about plays now, God, I want to do a play so badly. Let's, Let's do, do it right now. Play. Play. I'm sure somebody here has a script. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah but it was the most exciting time in my like it was the thing that I lived for in high school and in college and in grad school did a lot of school um, <laughs> but yeah yeah just uh, yeah I know I love live theater um, but again congratulations on a wonderful series um, I know this is based on the novel by Bonnie Garmus um, 
When you came across it, did you immediately see it as a series? Did you ever consider it in any other medium? It just, it, it feels so perfectly suited to this medium. It was a series. Mm -hmm. It was a series. It's too much life. And there was so much to get into and to sit in and to enjoy. It was always just like, how many episodes could it be? How long, like, what's the sweet spot? Because I think we've all had shows where it feels like it either goes by too fast or sometimes where you're like, okay, we could have not dragged this out so much. And I feel like with her novel in particular, her tone and pace is so sublime mm -hmm. that honoring that felt so paramount. To me, it was like the tone and the sort of buoyancy that I felt like I learned so much from, that you were able to get into things that were really difficult and hard, but you never felt like it was pulling you under. You felt like you were able to get close to it and look at it and feel it and, and hurt from it, but it didn't sweep you away to where you felt hopeless. And that's just so important to me when, when making art. So I just wanted to make sure that that was honored. Um, and I know that everybody else on the team wanted that too. And you, you just never know until it's out in the world if you're like, did we do that right? You know, you just never well, know. yes is the answer to that. Um, your showrunner is Lee Eisenberg, who is, is. he's worked on everything from the office to jury duty. Um, and I understand, like, like, uh, how did you come to collaborate with him? I, I heard his wife was a fan. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you know this? I I think his wife had read the book and was telling him about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. Is they were I believe on their honeymoon. She was reading the book and was like, "This is the best thing I've ever read." And they gave it to him. He was like, this is the best thing I've ever read. And just reached out to Apple, I think, as like a cold call. It was like, I love this book. I don't know if you're doing anything with it. And we were like in the midst of figuring that out. Wow. And he had a first look deal with Apple. We were working with Apple. And it was like, it was just miraculous. And also felt so true to this story of like, oh, yes, it's just life is like how the wind blows. And here we are. Yeah. And it's just perfect. Did you take meetings with him? I mean, was there anyone else you even considered? Because he seems so perfect for this material. Yeah, you know, it was very simple. Yeah. It was just, yeah. I do feel like these things, you know, when it's the saying of like, when you know, you know, and it's just as simple as that. And um, yeah, it just was done at that point. And it was a very small group of people. You know, we, we, if you have watched the series and paid attention to those credits, like we didn't have a big writer's room. It was really like two people. You know, sometimes wow, three. Really. Sometimes and you, you had three, well, the one is a pair, but you had three directors for the whole season, I think. Yeah, so they were, they were split into blocks. So each director or directing pair did two episodes, which was like over the course of like a month. That's so refreshing. I know, I'm sure you know from working in episodic television, one of the hardest things must be different directors coming in. It really is, and it made it so special that we could have like the continuity of care in that kind of way, to have like one person directing two episodes and, and then and all women, like all these incredible women coming in to direct us, and there was just this, like we were just all on the same page. Like it was, it just felt so good, and there was such understanding between everyone. And I don't know, it was like 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 an intuitive thing. Like I felt like it, everyone intuitively was just like understanding the feel of this and like and how it should go, and made the space really special. It's a kind of magic, really, every day to be there. Both of these characters, they're, they're women who were really ahead of their time in so many ways. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, about the preparation you put into portraying them and immersing yourselves in this world of the 1950s and 60s? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you have, you should go for that. Okay. you want to talk while you collect yourself. Um, uh, so for me, uh, I don't, I don't want to bog you down too much with the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, so really for me, um, in playing Harriet, a big thing for me is during this time period, a lot of black people were migrating to California from like the Southern and East Coast states. And so I didn't want her to sound like, I'm from California, and I didn't want her to sound like she was from California. So I was like trying to cu cultivate a dialect that I thought someone like her who wanted to appear a certain way in, with certain audiences, how she would think would be appropriate to sound in order to be believed as being smart and and capable um, and so and I had a lot of help from one of our um, cultural consultants on set who gave me a lot of background around the time period and everything and to not get too much into it around like the neighborhood stuff because I've been asked questions about like how would these two be friends and it was like well I'll let you know like 
the West Adams neighborhood was a predominantly white neighborhood in the 1940s, but as black people started moving in because the Supreme Court ruled that you could no longer have racially restrictive covenants, then black people were able to start moving into the neighborhood, and so then more white people started moving out and developing Beverly Hills, and et cetera. And, <laughs> and that is when this neighborhood became so affluent. Uh, um, uh, Hattie McDaniels had a mansion there. Ray Charles had a music studio there. And it was just this vibrant community. And so then, of course, for anyone who wanted housing there, it would be more affordable for a white person. And that's why it makes sense that Calvin Adams would move there. It was also near a school. And so like the whole like scientific portion of it like made sense that like this would be the community that he could be in and afford to live in. And then it just how our bond from there goes like to have like someone who understands what it is to be discriminated against with someone else who understands what it is to be discriminated against <laughs> like, like their their relationship is able to form from that so like that's just the historical context of how we are in this place and what i was and looking towards yeah. and then and then it's like that's the character stuff <laughs> But yeah, but like just diving into books and wanting to understand what it was for black people li living during that time and what that looked like and what those relationships would look like and, and then embodying that. It, I'm yeah, and just for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really well. It's just remarkable. Yeah. It just makes me. Mm. <laughs> no, it's really no. just. Mm, I don't know. It's just amazing <laughs> because it is like to because I understood all of that without even understanding yes. all of the work. Like I've never sat down. We've never sat down and be like, okay, okay, actor, tell me what you did to get here. You know, we just hung out. But it's like you feel the depth of it, and I think that's just the beauty of of this work. Really, is like there's so many details and and things that we obsess about and think about, and then you just hope that it comes through. And it, maybe it's not in those specific words but it's in the feeling of it and it's so true and you just had such a difficult job you had so much to carry and you just you just uh, just the grace and the beauty and the heart every time it just kills me so thank but you can i say that's only possible because of the energy you created on the set <laughs> no truly because you did walking on Take the set the, the way the way you welcomed all of us the way you know when you're working with another so generous cool. actor Someone who just wants to empower you to say, like, this is yours, you know? Like, you are constantly checking in to be like, does this feel right? Like, I will talk to them right now. Like, is this is this right for you? And it's like, that was such a beautiful thing because, like, coming into something, like, you never know what people are going to be like. And you just, you empowered all of us. You made us all feel so comfortable, so welcome. It was a home. We were a family. And like that, it was the best working environment I've ever had, hands down. It was wonderful. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, the reception that was insane no, no that was genuinely no, crazy that was insane. i have so many bags hollywood people are nuts <laughs> that was wild then got his taste of some my, la my senior, my senior <laughs> someone gave us his business card anyway we just hung on a rooftop with asia naomi king and brie Lars. <laughs> that LA? was crazy was LA? that was we were just like chatting for a yeah. little bit and they were so nice so down to earth is it like weird for you i gotta process that there were some yeah weird yeah, we a lot got going on. Some interesting people. There's a lot going on. We're just exploring the hotel right now, but um, very, very, very surreal. Private, very yeah. private. <laughs> this event to be as intimate as it was but it was a very small group and they were so chill and yeah. cool yeah and I guess like 
they're so different from their characters in the show. So talk, I mean, I don't know how you felt, but like talking yeah. to them, I didn't think about their characters because they're so different, right? Yeah, 100%. I guess the only time that I've been to a screening where the actors have come to the reception was when I went to the mammal screening with James Corden. And if you saw the vlog, you know, that was a complete surprise. So I wasn't expecting them to, you know, hang out afterward. But it was so nice. They were just there and hanging and people would come up and like, you know, get to talk to them for a few minutes. But we were talking to them for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. About, yeah. I asked Asia, what did I ask her? I don't remember. Oh, I how asked, you yeah, how you stay grounded and present when as actors, you're always striving for more. And she had a really nice answer. She just was saying, you know, you stay grateful because as you never know when your next job is coming. And it was so wild hearing that coming from her who's had so much success. And she's like, no, I still feel that way, which is, I don't know, really interesting to me. But and I then- still chuckle about the inconsistency of acting. Yeah, and even like Brie Larson, I don't yeah. know. I thanked Brie Larson for sharing her YouTube videos where she talks about roles she hasn't booked because I just think that's so admirable. And that was nice to get to like tell her. And then I asked her, oh, how she differentiates her like public and private I guess persona. private persona. Yeah, and she had a really thoughtful answer as well. She said they're, they're just so different lives yeah. that you, you have to. Right. And then, you just kinda learn as you go. Ben and I were losing it. The, the, so the waiter. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. The servers would come out with And they would make food. it, their feet wouldn't even touch the ground. No. People, and people were there was a, Almost a fight almost yeah. broke Over out. One sandwich. woman like almost attacked this other guy because Yeah, over a sandwich. sandwich. And I got one by being friendly and it was a damn good sandwich. Yeah. I got three funny. pieces of avocado toast, a tater tot, and a sandwich. And they had these little ice cream cups oh, in shot glasses. <laughs> and there was a guy with this miniature spoon and a shot glass like scraping the inside trying to get as much as he can out of it. It was incredible. Very cool night. 10 out of 10. I'm glad that we got some. Yeah, a little getaway. Sib time, too. And you know what? I might go home and watch the next episode <laughs> <laughs> of Lessons in Chemistry because now they were talking about what happens in the next episode that I haven't seen, so now I'm interested. That's gonna be actually really weird if I go home and watch the next episode that just having like hung out. Not hung yeah. out, that's, that's a stretch, but like, you know, spend like 10 minutes with. Talk to them? Yeah, like, I don't know. It's pretty cool. None of this stuff is like remotely lost on me how wild, you know. Really? Yeah, no. No, this is so cool, are you kidding? You're getting some great footage of Pitch Black. I know, sorry, this lighting is absolutely horrific. On that note, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I'll wait till the lighting's better. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.